So with that, um, welcome to this first webinar that uh, is the first of a series of webinars that we'll be putting out over the next several weeks. We haven't completely finalized the other ones. At this point, I anticipate they'll be every other Tuesday for the next um, three or four instances of that. So let me just go over the agenda for tonight. I'm hoping it'll take about an hour, uh, depending on questions. That's uh, what the rough time that will be. First thing I want to cover is what is Herdley? I believe there's some people here who uh, probably hardly know anything about Herdley and have not used it at all in the past. So we'll start off with that, do a quick overview. Uh, then I'll go through and show how Herdley can be installed. We'll do uh, a feature walkthrough. We'll talk about some documentation and how to get support. And then again, there'll be time at the end for questions. So that's the rough agenda. Uh, I should introduce myself. My name is Cannon Smith. I'm uh, one of the developers who created Herdly. I grew up on a hog farm and a cattle ranch and uh, did that for many years until I turned about 30, 28 or 30. And uh, I always loved programming computers as well. And so at that time, we got rid of the hogs, we got rid of the cattle, and I went into software development. I've spent the last 12 or 13 years developing some feedlot management software. It's been well received throughout the world. Fusion is the name of it. And the last three years I've been working on Fusion as well, but working on Herdy as much as I could. Herdy was released uh, just a few months ago, November officially, even although it was in beta before that. So that's a little bit about me. So let's talk about what Herdly is. Um, our tagline is your ranch in hand. And it's a little bit of a pun, but the idea behind that is that not only is Herdly something that uh, fits on your phone, uh, but also everything that Herdly can record about your ranch, about your cattle, uh, is gonna be with you all of the time on your phone. Uh, of course, it works on computers too, but just the idea that you don't need to have just a little bit of information with you to make better decisions if you have all the information about your animals with you all the time. So when you see that heifer that's out in the field and you're curious about something, you can always look it up right away or record something as well. Herdly is supported by, uh, on the iPhone, iPad, uh, Macintosh, and Windows computers. And the way it works, we allow you to have as many of those devices as you want. So, you know, if you and uh, your spouse or some other people that work with you, your children or others, uh, all want to have access to the information on your ranch, they can all run Herdly on their phones or their computers or whatever they want. Uh, it's completely unlimited. And the information that changes by, on any of those devices is automatically synced to any other device. I'll go into that in just a little bit more detail in just a moment. Herdly also works offline. There's no special mode required for that. Uh, you can be in the middle of doing anything and the internet connection goes out because you're too far away or for any other reason. It doesn't make any difference. Herdly continues to work just fine. And when you do get back to where there's internet, you'll be able to uh, sync everything and be back to, to normal there. There's a lot in Herdy. The last thing I want to mention at the moment is that uh, for Canadian producers, Herdy has some very deep CCIA integration. I won't be touching on that very much uh, in this webinar. We will touch on it more in a future webinar. Um, I'll just say this about it. Every time you go through the regular use of Herdy, for example, let's say you're recording a new calf and you, and you were tagging it with a RFID tag as well. Just simply by recording that information, Herdly in the background automatically will create a CCIA event. And uh, later on, whenever you want, all you have to do is click one button, and all of those moved events, new, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, birth date events or anything else will automatically be sent to CCIA. When we go a step further than that, uh, we also have Herdly check in the background later on to see uh, every one of those events, if any of those aired out with uh, CCIA, and if they did, 
then it gives you a message so you know. Now we don't ever have to go to the website and check on things later on. So that's a brief uh, overview of Herdly. Uh, I do want to just talk a little bit about more about the syncing and the offline storage process. Uh, hopefully everyone can see this slide. So Herdly has the best of two worlds. Uh, it is cloud-based, which means that all of your data is stored up in the cloud. That's the cloud storage area there in the center of this slide. And uh, that's good because it means that you don't have to worry about uh, backing up your data or losing your data. Uh, if all of your data was on your phone, for example, and something happened to your phone, you bought a new phone, all you have to do is install Herdly, type in your credentials, and everything would uh, be available to you again because everything's up in the cloud. So it's very safe in that sense. However, uh, we're not web-based. Web-based would mean that the only way you could get information uh, about your herd would be to be connected to the internet. Or sometimes you can go into a special mode that allows you to get some information about your herd ahead of time, as long as you know you're going into that mode. Uh, Herdy doesn't do that. We have uh, a native application that's working on the phone or on the desktop. And as you can see here, uh, we have a 100% local copy of all of your data on each device. And so if you're trying to look up some history of an animal and you don't have a connection to the cloud, it doesn't matter. Everything's already on your device and always is on your device. This allows Herdy to work very fast and, uh, and allows us to take uh, advantage of some of the native capabilities of phones and of computers. But because it does synchronize back up to the cloud, anytime you make a change on, one, on your computer or on your phone, within a few seconds, if there's internet connection, those changes will be synced up to the cloud, and then um, a little while later, back down to all of your other devices. If there's no connection, because you're out in the back 40 and you don't have an internet connection, you can continue to make as many changes as you want. And then when you get back to your house or somewhere where there's good cell service, um, all of those changes will just automatically in the background go up to the cloud without you having to think about it. I just want to show a couple more things on this slide before we move on. Um, we have the idea in Herdly of different users. And that's why we have this, these pictures down here. You can have several users. You can have one or more administrators. And you can lock down what different users can and cannot do within Herdly, which gives you a hopefully a sense of security to do there. All right, let me just check to see if there are any questions so far. It looks like there are not, so that's great. Okay, this is all clear. Uh, with Herdly, we are targeting all sizes of ranches. It doesn't matter if you're a small ranch with just, you know, 10 cows or a very large ranch with uh, many hundreds or even thousands of cows. Uh, we feel that Herdly has something to offer for everybody. Okay, with that, let's move on to the demonstration. Let me just uh, get that ready. Okay, so what we want to do first, I'm going to assume some of you may have installed Herbie before, but I'm sure some of you haven't. So we're going to start from ground zero. I'll show you how to get Herbie installed. We're going to install it on the computer first. And so I've got a web browser open here. And uh, what I'm going to do is just go to our website, which is simply herbie.ca. And when you get to our website, if you look up at the top, there will be a downloads link. If you click on that, that takes you to the downloads page. Since we're on a computer here, we have two options here. We can download for the Mac or download for Windows. I'm on a Mac, so I would click download for Mac. You see just below it, it explains what the minimum requirements are for your computer in case that's an issue. So I would just click download for Mac and it would begin downloading in the background. Now, I actually already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to let this finish. Um, but if you haven't downloaded it before, you could do that. 
when you're done, you're going to have a file on your desktop. If it's on Windows, it'll be on the Windows desktop. Or depending on how your computer's set up, uh, you may need to either double click this file or it may automatically install Herbie for you. Once Herbie is installed, let me just minimize this window. If you're on a Mac, you should see uh, an icon in your dock that looks like this. This is Herbie. And if you're on Windows, you'll see a similar icon uh, on your desktop. So I'm just going to launch Herbie here and you'll get to see what it looks like the first time it's launched on the computer. Okay, here we go. We get to the welcome to Herdly screen. And at this point, you have a few different options. Uh, you could let Herdly know your ranch already has a Herdly account. Maybe you've created a Herdly account on a different computer at another time, and you just need to get it going on this computer. And if you did, you would keep this option selected. You would hit continue, type in your credentials, and then this computer would be ready to go. I'm just going to back out. <clears throat> Excuse me, I better get a drink here. The second option is this one here. I need to create a Herbie account for my ranch. And this is the one you would use if you've never set up a Herbie account on any computer. And if you go through that, then you're going to see a screen that looks like this. And you simply enter in the fields, the ranch name, your address, an email address, a few other pieces of information, and then click uh, the Create Herbie account at the bottom. And once you do that, and this only has to be done once on one computer, your Herbie Ranch account will be created. You'll be given a ranch ID, and you can continue from there, either setting up your ranch or creating this ranch on, or sorry, um, beginning to use this ranch on other devices as well. Let me just cancel out of there. The third option is uh, this one here. I'd like to see a demo ranch first. And if you choose this option, then uh, Herdly will download kind of a small demo ranch. It has about four years worth of uh, fake data but it can be helpful so you can get an idea of how Fuge, or sorry, how Herdly works. And, uh, and as you do that, you'll be able to actually enter some animals, but only about 10 animals. But you can see as much as you want, look around as much as you want, look at all the graphs and the reports. Uh, you won't be able to sync, but those are the only two restrictions on a demo match. Everything else can be done. I'll show that in a little bit more detail on the phone in just a moment. Now let me just check my notes here so I don't get ahead of myself. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this particular case, I already have a Herbie account set up. Uh, so I'm going to choose, sorry, I'm going to choose the first one. My ranch already has a Herbie account. I'm going to hit continue. And uh, the ranch ID for this uh, webinar I've created. Oops, I can't type here. Try that again is this and so i've typed in my ranch id i've typed in my username and password and i can click login and what it does then is it connects to the cloud gathers all the information from the cloud and pulls that down all right while that's syncing i'm actually going to switch over to the phone okay hopefully everybody can now see my phone. I'm just going to show you how you can get Herbie on your phone. Before I do that, I just need to explain one thing that's important. Uh, when you create your Herbie branch account, because of some restrictions with Apple, it has to be done on your computer. So you can look at the demo ranch on your phone as much as you want, but you can't actually create your own ranch on a phone. You have to do that on a computer first and then you'd be able to go from there and do the rest on your phone. So on the phone, you can see I have uh, the App Store at the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna tap on the App Store. Try it again, there we go. And on the bottom right, I'm gonna tap on the search uh, tab there, and then I'm just gonna type Herbie at the top in the search bar. 
And you can see it's one of the options that comes up. So I'm just going to tap on that. And there's Herd Me. And usually you could download it from here um, because I'm already, I already have it downloaded. It's telling me I can just open it. And that's how you can get Herd Me on your phone. You would just install it from there. Once it's installed, it'll be, you can see the icon in the bottom right hand corner of the window. Let me just tap on it to open it up. And this is what it looks like when you first launch it on a phone. There's a little bit of information here. And you have a, two options at the bottom. One is to log into an existing ranch. Again, that would be one that you created on a computer somewhere. And the second option is to try a demo ranch. And I want to show you what a demo ranch looks like. So we're going to go with that option first. So I'm going to tap Try a Demo Ranch. When I do that, this screen shows. It just gives me some information. Let me know that a demo ranch is going, going to be downloaded. And so I tap Download Demo Ranch at the bottom. And let it uh, work for a moment as it gathers information. And now, as you can see, I have uh, a demo ranch. The reason I know this is a demo ranch is because I can see at the very top of the screen in green. It says this is a demo ranch, tap here for information. If I do tap there, then this screen comes up. This lets you do two different things once you get to the screen. Uh, first of all, near the bottom of the screen, you can see that it's telling you how many animals you can create or edit. As I mentioned before, in the demo ranch, you're limited to 10 animals being created or edited. Uh, if you get all the way through all 10 animals and you want to play some more. You can always hit the refresh demo ranch. It'll grab a new demo ranch from the, from the cloud server and reset those so that you can continue on. Of course, any changes you made before that will be lost, but you'll have a new demo ranch. And the last option there is you can log into an existing ranch, and this would be what you'd use when you're ready to move from the demo ranch to your own ranch. We'll be coming back to the phone in a few minutes. In the meantime, I'm just going to log into an existing ranch. So when I tap that button, this screen comes up, and this is where, again, I need to type in the um, ranch ID that I'm going to be using for tonight, which is this one. I'm going to type in my username and my password. Now you can all see my password. And it will go through the same process and pull that information down. And there we have that. Okay, let me just check to see if there are any questions yet. And there's not. So either I explained things really well, or uh, you just don't have questions. Hope it's the former. Let me just check my notes. Make sure I've covered everything. Yes, I think I have. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the computer now. So just give me a second to do that. While I'm doing that, I just want to mention, uh, sorry, okay, hopefully you can see my computer now. I just want to mention that almost all the features that are available on the desktop version of Herdly of, uh, yes, of the desktop version, are also available in the mobile version. There's only a few things that aren't. Some of the setup, the initial setup for a ranch, are only available on the computer, and one or two small features. But we've done uh, as much work as we could to make them feature, have uh, feature parity on both devices. And I think that will be helpful for when you're out in the field. Uh, you know that you're going to be doing a lot of this stuff when you are out in the field, and hopefully that is helpful to you. So this is the part of the agenda where I'd like to just do a feature walkthrough. I'm not going to cover all of the features. I'm not going to go very much in depth on any of the features. But I want to show enough of Herbie so that if you haven't seen it before, you have a general idea of the kinds of things that it can do. And as I mentioned before, we will be having some webinars in the, in the next few weeks where we'll go into some of these features in a lot more detail. So this is our dashboard. I'll come back to it later, but for now, 
let me click on this animals button to bring up the animal list. <clears throat> Herdley is based completely on the idea of individual animals. Everything that happens in, in Herdley is based on um, something happening to an animal and never to groups of animals. That doesn't mean you can't work with groups of animals and, and I'll show you how that can be done. But at the raw level, everything is individual. It's important to keep that in mind. The animal list that you see here is the place where you do most of your work with the animals. So I wanted to show a few of the fields. Um, you can see this is the, the list of animals. There's some buttons across the top. It gives some extra functionality. Uh, at the bottom, it tells us how many uh, animals are in this ranch total, how many are displayed right now, and how many are selected. And then we have the search field. The search field is useful if you know the tag of an animal, you can quickly type it in. So if I just start typing in 115, apparently that was a poor example, 118, you can see that immediately the two animals that have a 118 in their tag are brought up. You can do, uh, I just typed in an A, and it's going to show there's 46 animals here that all have an A in their tag. So that's one way of being able to quickly find an animal. <clears throat> Another way is to use the filter button up here. So I'm going to click the filter button. And we have two kinds of filters. We have what we call common filters. These are the ones that we expect that we use most of the time. And that includes the status, classification, purpose, gender, etc. So for example, let's say we wanted to just look at all of the animals that were in uh, the old Hansen place. So I'm just going to choose that and click Apply Filter. And you can see that now we're looking at just 128 animals that are in the old Hansen place. I can go back up to Filter. I could also leave old Hansen place as the current location. And I could also say, you know what, I only want to see the calves that are there. So I'll apply that filter. Now we're looking at the 55 calves that are in the old Hansen place. If I go back to the filter, uh, I could continue to narrow that search down if I wanted, or I can remove a search by clicking on whichever search criteria I'm interested in and choosing any. This would get us back to where we were before. Before I leave the filter area, I just want to show that there is an advanced filter area as well, and uh, there's hundreds of different kinds of things that you can do in the advanced filter. This will be covered more in a future webinar as well, but uh, just know that it is there and can be very powerful when you need to find very specific groups of animals. I'll click Apply Filter, and this takes us back to our original list of animals when we started. So that's filtering. Uh, we can also change what columns we're seeing. Right now, we're just seeing a few columns about this animal. But we can click the View button here at the top in the button bar. And this will open up a window that has, on the right-hand side, a list of columns that are currently showing. And on the left-hand side, a list of columns that are available to be shown. And there's quite a few. They're broken up into categories. And you can also search at the top for a specific field name. So if I knew that I wanted a, a particular date, I could start typing in date. Now I have all of the fields that are related to date. So maybe I want to put in, uh, let's find something interesting, date of last calf might be interesting. I can just grab that, drag it over, and put it wherever I want. Maybe I want to have it right there. And I can move as many of those fields over as I want. And then when I click OK, you'll see that the list of changes so that we now have the date of last calf column showing. And you can quickly see how long ago each of these cows calved. Obviously, the cows have never calved, and so the field for them is great. So that's quite powerful. You can show as many fields as you like, as many columns as you like depending on what you're doing. Some tasks, you may want to be seeing certain columns, and other tasks, you may want to see a, a different set of columns.
<clears throat> in addition to that, we have the idea of a child list. And so what I can do is I can select the cow, we'll choose this first cow here, and I'll click on child list. I have several options here. Maybe I want to see all of her calves. So I'll choose the show calves uh, option. And you can see that the screen splits in two. So we still have the original list of animals on the top. But now at the bottom, we have a list of calves of whatever cow was selected up there. If I select a different cow, and you'll see we have a different set of calves. If I select a calf, the list down here, of course, will be blank because we don't have, a cow doesn't have any calves. You can also, let me just resize this window. You can also select more than one. If I select both of these cows, I'll get the calves uh, for both of them put together. And this can be quite useful uh, in, in many different ways. This list at the bottom also has its own set of buttons. So if you would like to filter within the list, you're going to get a similar uh, window up here where you can filter within the list, only certain calves in this case. Um, it has its own view button so that you can choose which columns are showing in this uh, child list at the bottom. And so there's quite a bit of, uh, of power here so you can really look at the data in different ways. Let me show you a couple of other child lists and so get an idea. Uh, drug events, maybe you want to see a list of all the drug events. In this case, there's not very many. There was a, one here on January 30th. This is all fake data, so some of this doesn't really make sense. You'll know it's just our, our test data. Let me just show maybe one other one. Let's look at preg check events. And you can see there was, I have two cows selected again, of course. If I just select the one, we're going to just see her peg check events. Here we can see each year the method and uh, the predicted calving date and some information like that. So that is how child lists work. And you can get rid of a child list by just clicking this little down facing button on the left. And we'll go away and we're back to seeing your normal list here. Uh, there's a few other things this window does. What I'd like to show next is the, uh, the workspace button. Everything I've showed you so far, the columns that are shown in the view, the filter you have with the, um, whether you're looking for just calves or animals in a certain location, those kind of things, whether or not a child list is open, all of that can be saved into what we call a workspace. And so you can set up a workspace up for a certain task that you're doing and just ask for that workspace to be drawn and then you'll be in that environment. Let me give you a few examples. I'll click the workspace button and you'll see um, Herdy actually comes with some built-in uh, uh, built workspaces. So as an example, let's click on the calves weaned one. I'll choose calves weaned and click done and there's a little bit of work and you'll see that in the calves wean workspace, the columns that are shown here um, are different because they're now showing information pertinent to uh, you know, the average weaning information for a particular animal, a particular cow. And it also shows a child list that shows each of the calves that was weaned with some of the birth information, but mostly with their weaning information. And so now I'm ready to do some some work regarding weaning for these animals. Let's look at another workspace. Maybe the preg check results could be interesting. I just double clicked at that time. It's a little bit faster way of bringing up a new workspace. <coughs> Excuse me. And you'll see that in this case, we have a list of uh, cows here. You can see uh, when they are preg checked, this is only one in this list, and a recent preg checking, and we have some preg check uh, results down here at the bottom for previous years as well. As I mentioned, it currently comes with several workspaces, but you can also create your own. So if you want to set up this window in a certain way to use later on, all you have to do is set up the window, come into this area, save it as a workspace, and uh, it'll be there in the future. 
And that also syncs to other devices. So if you set it up on one computer and you're working at another computer later on, you want to bring up that workspace, it'll be there and you're ready to go. I'm just going to go back to the default workspace now, which is right there. Okay, let me just pause for a minute to check to see if there's any questions. And then, no, nope, looks like we're doing good. Okay. The next thing I'm going to show is how you actually do things with animals. It's important to understand uh, the paradigm in Herdley, uh, which is quite simple. It's the idea that when you want to do something with an animal, you select one or possibly more animals in here, and then you choose what action you want to perform on that animal. And once that's done, then, then the action will be performed on that animal. And so we have uh, this first cow here selected. Let's say we wanted to move her to a new location. So she's selected. I go up here to the Actions button, and I click on Actions, and I look for the action I'm interested in. In this case, it's the Move Animals action. So I choose that, and Herbie opens up the Move Animals action on the right-hand side of the screen. Excuse me. It pre-populates with the current date and time, and so if you're doing this live, as we recommend doing as much as possible, uh, you won't have to change anything. All you have to do is choose the location. Now I can start typing the location in if I know what it is, uh, or I can choose it from the list. In this case, let's say that we're going to move her to section 11. Um, there's more information about how movements can update exposure information automatically. We'll go into that more in a future um, webinar as well. But I've changed the location to section 11. Now I'm going to click save. And you'll see that uh, right away, her location is now section 11. You can also do this with multiple animals at the same time. So I'm going to select a few different animals. Uh, maybe I'm going to just select these six animals here. And uh, then I go to Actions. And I go down to Move Animals. And Notice that it remembers that the last time we did this, we chose section 11. And so it pre-populates with section 11. We could go with that if we wanted, or we can go with something else. But in this case, I want to put these ones in the west pasture. So I choose west pasture, and then I click the save button. And you'll see that immediately those uh, selected animals have their location updated to the west pasture. Uh, if we had our CCIA account associated with, uh, with Herdley, with this ranch in Herdley, uh, that would have automatically created some move events in the background as well, ready to go up to CCIA to let them know these animals move between different premises. And that happens without me even having to know what's going on. It's just completely automatic. Okay, let me just show a few of the actions. I won't spend a lot of time on the actions, I just want to give you a flavor of what, for what kinds of things are available. Uh, first one I want to show here is new animal. Uh, this is the action that you would use <clears throat> when you're either entering your existing herd into herdy for the first time, or if you purchase animals later on and you need to get them into your herd, uh, you would use this as well. Remember, at the core herdy is really focused on individual animals, not just groups of animals. And so uh, the idea here is that you'd enter in each animal so it really knows about it. And there's several fields, you know, the tag and RFID and the status and gender and, and several other things. Again, I'm not going to go into detail on all those fields, but you would basically go through and enter whichever fields that you felt were important. And uh, then you would click save and then a new animal would be created. I just want to pause here for a second and explain that uh, in Herdley, we've tried really hard to make it so that you don't have to enter information in very many fields if you don't want to. You know, some ranchers want just kind of a bare bones record keeping system. They just want to keep track of the tag and maybe some birth dates and a few things. And so almost all of the fields in Herdley are optional. 
And we've also made it so that we can generate a lot of reports with only a few uh, fields. And uh, I'll show you where you can find what those fields are later on. At the same time, it does offer lots of fields uh, which are customizable in some cases, so that if you do want to enter a lot of information, you certainly can. So that's a new animal action. I'm not going to actually create an animal, I'm just going to click cancel. Um, let's create a, a calf. I'm just going to choose a random cow here. And I'm going to go up to action, <clears throat> choose new calf. And a similar uh, panel slides in. And you can see that the dam is already pre-populated here. Um, we can choose the sire if we wanted. The calf ID is already pre-populated based on some preferences I've set up for this ranch. This particular ranch, I want the tag number to be the same as the dam as far as the number portion goes, 105. And then append the year letter for this year, which happens to be G. And so it did that automatically. And there's a few options you have for setting up so it can work for what you want for your ranch. And you can override it. And I would just go through and enter in whatever information I wanted to for this uh, calf, including a picture if I wanted, and then I could save that as a new calf. I'm going to cancel that as well. One of the uh, uh, actions is helpful when you just simply want to see information about an animal, all the information about an animal. And we call that the animal history action. So if I choose that, we'll have the animal history action come in. And uh, you can see this includes pictures, you can see tag information. At a glance, you can see all kinds of status information. You can see the last known values for all of our attributes. We just have a few in here for this uh, cow. You look back and see her performance over time. You can see the pedigree information. In this case, we actually don't have much pedigree information on this uh, cow, but if you, there was, uh, you could see each of the animals here and you can click on them and get their history as well. You can look at the ownership, and then you can look in all the information like the arrival information, all the birth information, all the weaning information, and so on and so on, and uh, health events, all your credit check events, and and so on. I won't go through all of it, but you can see that there is quite a bit of information there. That's a quick way to get an overview of all of the information you have stored on an animal in your view. Click done. I think I'm going to show the new drug event. Again, this one's one that can be applied to many animals at the same time. So, for example, let's say you treated all of the calves at a certain location. We could use the filter to choose just the calves in this location. I'll just do that actually. Use the filter. I'm going to say, okay, we just want to see uh, just the calves that are in the peace pasture. Actually, I'm going to go old hats in place because I don't know if there's any in this pasture. And then I'll click apply. So now I've got 55 calves selected here. And then if I just select one of these animals, and if I hit uh, go up to the edit menu and choose select all, it's going to select them all. And then if I go to actions, I can go down to new drug event. And then here I could enter in the name of the drug, you know, some other information as I wanted what the dosage was. And if I hit save, there would be a drug event save for every one of those calves. Uh, just that quickly. So it doesn't take very long to enter in information of all the animals at the same time uh, when you do it like that. Yeah, I'm going to cancel that. And I'm just going to show two more of these actions. Again, later webinars will go into more detail on all of the actions. Um, the one I'm looking for, oh, I need to have a cow selected. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change my filter back to showing our original list. I'm going to select cow. I'm going to go up to uh, actions. And then new pregnancy check event is an, is an action available. 
take a quick look at that. And you can see the kind of things that you can keep track of. This is a good example, again, of where you don't have to keep track of very much information. You could just, re just uh, keep track of the date and then the result, whether the student's pregnant or open, possibly abnormal. Um, but if you want to go beyond that, you could enter in more information. Uh, you know, let's say that uh, the vet said that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 90 days is the number he called out, and so it's going to automatically estimate that uh, if you were to cut check a cow on this date, and she was 90 days into gestation, that the calf would be born November 2nd. If you want to record a predicted gender and check method and check and other information, you certainly can. But if you only want to record the result, that is also fine. The last uh, action I will show today is the edit animal one. And I just show this one so you can see where uh, hopefully this screen is caught up so I can see it now. Uh, where you can see the kinds of information you can edit in addition to weaning or preg checking or changing their weight and those kinds of things. Um, this, is the, this would be where you would go to change all kinds of other information, um, possibly their status, their attributes, um, their arrival, birth information, photos, uh, and those kinds of things. All right, I'm gonna cancel that. And just check to see if there's any questions. Looks like so far we're doing good there too. So you guys are a great audience. Okay, I want to switch back to the phone because I want to show how. Uh, sorry, I can't talk and switch at the same time, apparently. I want to show how this is the same on both devices. So let me just get the phone up here. Okay, hopefully uh, everyone can see the phone now. Okay, perfect. Uh, at the bottom of the phone, you can see we're currently on the dashboards. We'll come back to the dashboards in a moment. But I'm going to tap on the animals tab there at the bottom to switch to the list of animals. So, this is uh, analogous to the list of animals we have been looking at on the desktop all of this time. Of course, we can't show as many columns of information on a phone, but you get uh, four pieces of information about each animal. We could scroll through if we wanted to find something just by scrolling. But we can do the same kinds of things that we did on the computer. So for example, at the top, there's a search field. If I tap in the search field, You'll see that a special tag type keyboard comes up. You know it's going to be mostly numbers we're typing in. And as I start typing 118, you get those animals that have just 118 in them, which is just the same as uh, we saw on the computer. You can click the uh, tap the uh, little clear button on the right, and we get all of our cows back. Uh, just as a quick aside, one of the things you can do with the keyboard, if you are trying to type a letter, before we did an A, if you tap and hold uh, the one key, you see that the one key has an A, B, C below it, I want to get A, so I'm going to tap and hold the one, and you'll see a little letter comes up where I can then tap the A, and that's how you get a, a letter in that keyboard really quickly. If you want, you can also tap the switch keyboard, which is just above the one key, and that takes you to the regular keyboard that, um, that the iPhone usually has. So. All right, so that works. Um, I'm going to, uh, if you wanted to do a filter like we did on desktop, you'll see at the top right-hand corner of the window, there's a filter button. I'm going to tap on that. And this brings up the filters, and this is, uh, the layout's different, but it's exactly the same as what's on the desktop. At the beginning, or at the top, we have a list of the common filters, and so you can see location, for example, right now is set to any. If I tap it, and I get the location picker, and I can say, well, okay, I want to see everything at the old hats in place. 
And then if I tap done at the top right of the screen, we get back to our list and you can see that we're only looking at animals that are in the old hats and hats. Now if I tap filter again, uh, just as before, we can do, uh, we can mix filters together. So if I choose classification and change that to calf and then tap done again, now we're looking at just the calves at the old hands and things. You see near the top of the screen underneath the filter button, it shows us how many animals are displayed in the list right now. Okay, um, in the filter button, uh, there's also ability to do advanced searching uh, just as we could on the, on the uh, computer. And we'll show more of that again in another webinar. Actions work very similarly. You just select the animals you're interested in. You can see that this one's selected because of the green uh, checkbox on the left-hand side. Each one I tap will be selected, so you can tap more than one at a time. And then you'll see that just underneath the list, there are uh, four buttons, animals, stages, actions, and events. And if I tap one of those, for example, actions, I can choose in a, an action. I'll choose new animal. And it comes up with, uh, again, a very similar interface as was on the computer. I can change the location to whatever I want. And then if I save that, then, uh, then it will be saved. So, oh, I think I chose the same location. It was already in. <clears throat> okay, so that gives you an idea of how the actions work there. You can see that uh, currently we're showing the tag, uh, the status, the location, and uh, the classification in each row. That can be changed as well. On the bottom, you, on the bottom right of the phone, you can see there's a settings tab. If I tap that, one of the options, the third one down there is animal list preferences. If I tap that, then I'll see at the top an example of a cell. And if I tap any of the four corners of the cell, that field turns to red, meaning that's the one I can modify. And then if I choose a different, uh, a different field in the list below, for example, breeding pool stage, then if I go back to my animal list, I would show the breeding pool stage in that case. That is a poor example to use because I don't have a reading stage set for the cows, obviously. They're still just cows. That's how that would work. Okay. Um, we're going, running out of time a little bit quicker than I was hoping. So I think what I will do is uh, I'm going to just show you an example of syncing. Hopefully you've seen by now that the computer and the phone work very similarly. And if, once you've learned one, then the other one is going to be pretty much the same. So we'll go back so we can see all of our animals. And we we'll choose the first one. You can see that right now, this animal is in section 11. That's her location. So let's change her location. We choose actions. We tap on new animals. And I'm going to change her location to the west pasture, and I'm going to save it. Now it's on the west pasture. Now I want you to just remember that for a moment. We're going to come back and I'll show you how that's synced to the computer in a few moments. So 101A, west pasture. Before I leave the phone though, I just want to show the dashboards briefly. And so I'm going to tap on dashboards in the bottom left, and this shows uh, some information on more of a ranch level. So you get uh, an idea of your current bulls, cows, and calves, uh, your breeding pool stages, and see how many animals in each location. And then you can see some more information, like your calves born alive over the last three years, both as a count and a percentage. Uh, this ranch that I'm looking at right now hasn't had anything calved in 2019 yet. So that's why it's showing that. You can see things like a calving distribution, and uh, all kinds of other information. Uh, this information can be customized. You see there's a customized button at the top right-hand corner. 
if I tap that, I can see what uh, dashboards are showing right now in the ranch values and in the ranch metrics uh, sections. And I can also add additional, uh, you can see that there's quite a few dashboards that can be added. I won't go through and add any right now, but you'll see all that can be done. You just cancel back out. Just a quick tip, if you tap one of the graphs and turn your phone sideways, then you can see the graph a lot larger with the numbers. And it also lets you swipe um, between different graphs. So you can see them quickly. In addition, at the top left, there's a little grid button. And if I tap that, it just shows the graphs that I have currently selected to be showing. And then I can see them all at a glance. And then I can quickly uh, tap a particular one if I want. And to get out of that, I just click the Done button. And I'm back to where I was. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to switch back to the phone. Just remember that 101A went to the west pasture. So one minute while I switch. Okay. They should be switched now. Now, if you look at 101A right now, the computer still thinks it's in section 11. And this is important to point out. Um, Hurdley is really aggressive about getting changes you make from the phone or from the computer up to the cloud uh, as quickly as it can after you make it. So the way it works is after you've made a change, within about five to 10 seconds, Hurdley will try and push that information up to the cloud, assuming you have an internet connection. Um, however, in order to not use a lot of bandwidth, the other devices aren't checking to see if there's new information um, every few seconds. It does that about once every half an hour. But there is a way to force it if you want. So whenever you want, you can go up to the file, choose sync, and that's going to sync the information. And you can see that right away that change we made for 101A is showing up. So just keep that in mind about syncing. Um, in regular use, you're going to find that the information is, is current when you need it to be current. But again, you can force that when you need to. Okay, just uh, one more thing that I'm going to show within Herdly itself. I'm going to close the animal list window. And if I click on the setup button here in the dashboard, uh, you'll see that there's several things you can uh, go through. We're not going to spend very much time on this. I just want to show you what these windows look like. So the ramp settings, this is one of the things that's only available on the desktop. And this is where you enter in things like your ranch information, uh, set up your breeds, you can set up brands. I don't have any in this one. Uh, and you can go through your optional fields, decide what to look at. This is where you would set up your CCIE account. and uh, and additional things as well. So again, a future webinar, probably the next one actually will cover that in more detail. I just want to show two more things in the setup area. I'm going to go down to users. This would show a list of users. You can see me right here. If I double click on myself, um, it lets me uh, change a few things about me. The thing I want to show is the last tab, the permissions tab. Remember that I showed, told you before that every user in a, in a ranch can be uh, set to only do certain things, only allowed to do certain things. And here's that list of things, and you can simply check or uncheck what that user is allowed to do, and then how do you take over and make sure they can only do what you allow them to do. You cancel out of that. And the last thing I'll show you is the devices. You don't normally have to worry about this. And you can see we have a lot of test devices. But this is going to list each device that you have connected to your app. So for example, if you had a computer and a phone, then you're going to see two devices here, one for your computer and one for your phone. And you can see who last logged in on that device, when it was the last time you connected to the cloud. The reason I wanted to just quickly show you this today 
uh, so you get a sense of some of the security and hurting. Uh, if you know there's a device out there, maybe you lost a device or it was stolen or maybe you have an employee that, uh, that was leaving and still had information on there, you could come here, select the device in question, and then click this button down here, send wipe request. And that simply uh, tells Herdly that on that other device it needs to get rid of all of the data and not let them log in anymore. And so you have a way of kind of controlling that later on. Okay, so that's the end of, uh, end of showing off some of the features. I just want to go over the documentation and support. I just want to take maybe three minutes on this, and then I'm going to open the rest up to questions. So to do that, I'm going to bring, no, actually, I almost forgot. Uh, I'm going to open up a window, just a random window. The CCIA events, I didn't even show you this before, but the reason I want to show it now is because almost every window in Herbie has a little help button in it. You see this down in the bottom left-hand corner. It actually has it on the phone as well. Almost every screen in, on the phone has a little help button at the top center of the butt of the window. And if you click that, it's automatically going to open up your web browser uh, with the help topic that addresses that exact window that you're in. So that's pretty handy. And if you, now that we're already on a website, you can go there, even if you don't have Herdy, and you can click on the support uh, button at the top. And you'll see we have lots of different uh, support uh, pages here. In fact, we've tried to be very careful and document everything about Herdy. We're not trying to keep anything a secret, it's all there. So in the getting started section, there's information on how to install Herdy and how to create and set up your ranch and, and other things. A bunch of general information here. The data entry techniques is a really helpful one if you're just getting started. It shows you how to select different animals. Excuse me, it shows how to, um, how to enter dates in really quickly, uh, those kinds of things. Well worth reading all of this. This talks about how to use the animal list and gives more detail on some of the things I talked about today, like filters and childless and workspaces. And if I scroll down more, you'll see there's the help topic on every action that we have. Um, we have a bit of an FAQ. We're trying to see what's changing in Herdly as we release new versions. We keep our release notes here. And if you're not able to find uh, the help that you need by looking through this information, you can always come to the very bottom of our support page and click uh, Request Support. I'll just do that now. And you just need to type in your name and your email address, a bit of other information if you have it, that's helpful. And then let us know what your question is here, and uh, we'll get back to you. We try really hard to get back within 24 hours. Often it's uh, quicker than that. Um, but our goal is to try to get back to you in about 24 hours. Now on that, I'll just point you to the blog. Uh, we don't post every day by any means, um, but we, we post uh, something occasionally especially when there's a new version or there's something we want to talk about. It can be a good place to check and see how things are going. And we do have a Twitter link and we send out updates and information to Twitter as well. And the last page I'll show is our pricing page. People often have questions about our pricing and this page explains everything about how the pricing works. Uh, it's not based on your devices or anything. It's just simply based on the number of uh, current animals you have. There's a little calculator here you can use to enter in how many cows you have, and it'll give you a rough estimate. And there's more information down here on the uh, pricing as well.